Hello, good morning, everybody. It is so good to have you in church this morning. If you're out in the foyer, come on in, come and bring your coffee. We're going to get into worship. That is what we've come for this morning. We've come to worship the Lord, right? We've come to give Him honour. We've come to give Him glory. But if you're new here, a massive, massive welcome to you. We would love to meet you, get to know you, get you plugged in, get you involved. So do grab one of our Connect team on the way out. They're the guys in the foyer after who are by the Connect desk and with the Here to Help t-shirts on. And they'll be able to tell you about all the ways you can get Get involved. We also have a welcome evening coming up on the 20th of February, so do find out about that. But we're going to get into worship. So stand to your feet, welcome the next person next to you to church, but also fill this space, guys. Come and fill it. Come and fill this. We're going to worship. Yes. The other week um, at youth, we were doing, we were talking about God, which we always do. <laughs> and we were talking about the Lord and we were talking about intimacy with the Lord. And do you know, intimacy, it doesn't just mean quiet. It means that real rawness with the Lord and that intentionality. It's going after something with the Lord, being known by Him and knowing Him. And we asked the youth to write down some of the words that they would describe there relationship with the Lord, what their intimacy looks like, what their worship looks like, what their response that is. And some of the words that were coming out, so it started with good, classic teenage response. Like we started there, but as they began to like really explain how their relationship with the Lord is, they're like, it's a safe space. It is holy. It's the only place I wanna be. It is constant. It's my solid rock. Jesus is the only thing I need. And they just began to overflow from this place of understanding of who the Lord is. And as we worship this morning, we understand who He is. He is the Prince of Peace. He is our solid rock. He is our firm foundation. He is the King of Kings. He is the risen Lord. He is the forgiver of our sins. And we worship Him because He is worthy, right? He is so worthy. So why don't you just raise your hands where you're at and just begin to speak out who the Lord is to you. Just some of those words, He is King of Kings, He is worthy. Begin to speak it out. Declare who He is where you're at. You are Prince of Peace, Lord Jesus. We love You, Lord Jesus. You are our everlasting Father. We thank You for Your closeness. We thank You that You never give up on us. We thank You that You chase after us. We thank You that You bring freedom. Lord Jesus, we love You. And we step into Your presence this morning and we worship You. You are so, so worthy. You are so, so worthy. You are royal. Lord, You are royal and You are seated on high. And we worship You. We give You everything. You are so worthy, Lord. We love You. We love You. We love You. We love You. Let's worship, guys. Let's worship. And all we need is you. All we need is you. Yeah. 
darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe, I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power, yeah Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Yes, my praise belongs to you forever Come on This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'll justify Testimony, this is my testimony. Come together, come together, sons and daughters. For we're blood and washed in water. Yeah. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father.
cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. We've all creation cry, God. We'll see, we'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift you high. We've all creation cry, God. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. We praise.
shake up the ground Shake up the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better Shake up the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better grateful for his presence right every time we worship him he comes he moves among us and I believe the Lord wants to do two things this morning I just um, we want to go after healing the sick we want to do this week in week out day in day out right we are a people who believe what the Lord says he is the Lord our healer and we want to see him his manifest power move in our lives as we're as we heal the sick and as we see that this morning but I also believe that there's something about um, a boldness that comes on us it says in Acts 2 as um, as the upper room church waited for the gift of the Holy Spirit as he came it said they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the Lord released power there was power among them and um, there's something about, I feel like the Lord wants to just release a boldness. He's going to give us a deposit of faith this morning to heal the sick. And then we're going to invite the sick to come forward and just um, receive healing as we pray for them. And so I just want to say, Lloyd, actually, would you just come up here, Lloyd? So some of these guys, the Mission 24 guys, they've been out in, it is Mozambique, isn't it? Rwanda, sorry, Rwanda. Uh, these guys have been out in Rwanda. Come on up, Lloyd. And they've seen some incredible healings. And I just believe as they release, as Lloyd releases some of the things he saw um, when he was out there, there's going to be an increase in faith, right? That actually as we hear the testimony of what Jesus has done, He wants to do it again. He wants to do it again in our community. Amen? Do you believe it? Yeah? Three of you? We believe it. Church? Yes, we want to see it. Lloyd, would you just tell us some of the things that you saw? Just a couple of testimonies. I'll start with the best one it's the best one so there's a, a young boy he must have been about three to four years old he's never walked a single day in his life completely paralysed all over his body excuse my language but as in he was like a flop basically he, he had nothing so me and one of the other team we started to pray and we believe Jesus heals right yeah we believe Jesus heals yeah, yeah. we believe that yeah, yeah. amen so we had that faith, Jesus wants to heal. But I'll be honest with you, I didn't believe that. As much as I knew it up here, I didn't believe it in my heart. There's a difference between knowing it here and receiving it here. Anyway, we started to pray. And my faith is increasing. I'm like, Lord, heal this man. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. We're praying, we're praying. Nothing happened. 
but we carried on in the name of Jesus. Like the woman with the issue of blood, we pushed through the crowd, we pushed through everything we was thinking, we pushed through that moment, we carried on praying. Next minute, he starts to move, he stretches up, he's looking at me. I've got a photo on my phone to prove this. He's looking at me. Next minute, he smiles and he starts to walk. He's never walked before, he started to walk. Give God glory. Um, and then I've seen this probably over 20 times in Rwanda. I was on a stage like this, on a platform like this. I was believing for blind eyes to be open. And I could see this woman straight in front of me. She was blind. She ministered healing. We're praying for blind eyes to be open. As she commanded blind eyes to open, I could see straight in front of me this lady I'd never seen before. Boom, her eyes popped open straight in front of me. There and then her eyes opened. I've seen 20 eyes open that, on that trip. Amazing, amazing. So who would like to see healing this morning? Yeah, I want to be anointed by the Holy Spirit to see healing. So just put your hands out. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this place. And we ask that you would fill us and that you would fill us with power. Lord, that you would release a boldness and release a faith to see healing in this place. In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen. So if you are sick in any way, would you come forward? We're gonna make a space here, guys. So if you're, if you're not sick, just make a space. If you are, you can stay in the middle. But if you are sick in any way, I feel like the Lord highlighted um, skin, like skin, um, like itchiness or skin rashes, things like that. We've had a testimony in a week from someone in this church who said that their daughter had like a clump of skin. Like, I can't remember what they were, but it was like a, a rash on the back of her leg for weeks on end. And then it just disappeared as we prayed. And so I believe that Lord wants to heal that. But if there's anything, if you are sick in any area of your life, I want you to just come forward. If you are a parent, you can come forward for your child as well, stand in the gap for them. And um, you guys who want to see this healing, why don't you just pray for the same sex. If you're a girl, pray for a girl. If you're a guy, pray for a guy. Some of the youth, you might want to grab a leader and come round and just ask them, can we have a, a little bit more light? Is that okay? Just ask them really quickly, well, what is it? What is it that I can pray for? Ask them for some permission to maybe touch that area if it's appropriate. And then just quick prayers. We don't need to go on a tangent with the Lord, but we just say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Rashes leave the skin. Lumps fall off in the name of Jesus. Headaches be gone. You might wanna say see, you might wanna say hear. Ask them what it is and just declare healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, would your holy presence come and would you fill every person with your healing touch this morning from head to toe. If you're watching online, just put your hand where it hurts. Put your hand where there's sickness. And declare, in the name of Jesus, I receive my healing. In the name of Jesus, I receive my healing. Okay, and test it out. Do something that maybe you couldn't do before. Try it out. Try it out. Has there been any measure of healing? Just start to wave. Just start to wave. If you feel a difference, if a headache has been lifted off, look at your skin. Check your skin out. Test it out, guys. Test it out. Lord. 
just wave your hand and just try it out. If you feel any measure of healing, I want you just to wave your hand so we can see what the Lord is doing. Amazing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come down and let us know. Come down and let us know what's happening. of God is the power of God. If this is your first time in church, this is what we, we believe. We believe that Jesus comes to set us free from our sin and from our sickness. This is what we do. And so we pray that heaven would come on earth as we encounter the love of God and the power of His presence. So if you've been prayed for this morning, I want you just to come and let us know if you see any difference through the week, come and let us know. But if you're out on the, on the, if you're not receiving prayer, why don't you stretch your hand forward to these guys? Just stretch your hand forward. We're all involved in this. And just pray this, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your healing. And we say more, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're still receiving prayer, we're going to continue to worship. close to us and that you're not far. There was a lady just to release in the room that she felt like her leg was really tight and there's just been a measure of healing. It's got a lot looser um, since we prayed for her. So we just, yeah, we declare full healing, right? In the name of Jesus. still receiving then continue to receive if you are with the Lord continue to be with the Lord we are or we're going to stay with the Lord all the time aren't we but if you're just in that place of ministry then do just receive we're going to take up our offering so if you want to take a seat you can also take a seat I am going to ask you to stand up again but we're going to take up our offering in just a moment in a minute the the buckets are going to go round and you know how to give if you're new here today and you don't know how to give there's some leaflets you can read uh, there's some information that's going to come up on the screen 
Um, we're going to take up our offering. We always say giving is part of our worship. And we're going to do that in a moment. But I just wanted to say something to you about the blessing of the Lord. Um, I've been really thinking about God's blessing this week, the promises of His blessing. And you know, um, the Bible pretty much says that we can ask God to do what He said He's going to do. And all throughout the Scriptures, there are promises about the blessing of God all the way throughout the Scriptures. And I'm, I've been particularly just looking at the blessing of Deuteronomy 28, which is a long list of blessings that we receive as the people of God. And it says basically that if we obey God, we'll be blessed in all of these ways. And that's true. So we can come to the Lord and we can say, I've done what you said I'm to do. And now will you do what you said you were gonna do? And we might think that's a bit presumptuous, but actually God loves us to pray with His Word. He loves us to pray His promises back to Him because He is a good God and He does what He says He's gonna do. But you know, in the New Covenant, what is so amazing is because of what Jesus has done on the cross, it's like even more because Jesus was the fulfilment of the law and the prophets and everything in the Word of God. And so we're literally going to God and saying, because you've done what you said you were gonna do, will you do what you said you're gonna do for me? And there is grace in that place of the blessings of God. And it's both for us, you know, because as we walk in the promises of God and we lean into the grace of God, we also do what He asks us to do. And one of the things that we do is we give. We give our offerings, but we can literally say, Lord, bless me, God. Bless me as I give because You promised because you promised. And I've just been meditating on these promises because I know that people are in all sorts of circumstances and situations in all sorts of ways, sometimes saying, I don't know if I'm receiving the blessing of God in this area, maybe in my health, maybe in my finances, maybe in my working life. But you know, we need to get good people of God at reading the Word of God and saying, but you said, but you said, and as we give, as we take up this offering, that's what I wanna do with you. I wanna say, God, you said. Now I have this wonderful book that somebody in the church actually gave me and it's by a guy called Charles Caps. And it has full of, you know, we make declarations every week. Well, this is full of declarations that are based on the Word of God. And it kind of brings them all together. And then you can go back to the Word of God. And I wanna read one with you today because I just think it's really a beautiful word to read about the blessing of God. So, so instead of reading it off the screen, we're gonna read it in this book. We're gonna do it together. We're gonna do our best to say it one after the other. Why don't you stand up? And I'm gonna read something. And then as I stop, I want you to re repeat it back to me. Can we do that? It could all get all very untidy, but we'll be okay. So this is what we're gonna say together. And this is from Deuteronomy 28. I am blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am blessed in the basket and I am blessed in the store. My bank accounts, investments, health and relationships flourish. The blessing of the Lord overtake me in all areas of my life. And we're gonna say that one more time. The blessing of the Lord overtake me in all areas of my life. And I pray, Lord, that Lord, as we do what You've said we're to do, that You would do over us, over this people, what You've promised that You would do in the Name of Jesus. And the people said, Amen, Amen. Why don't you welcome Steve? Good. Well, that was fun. I know we've messed up the seating for some of you. You didn't know where to sit, did you? You got your names written on the seat. Ha! Ah, you, you should have seen the first service. There was sweat running down some of their faces as we moved the seats. 
Uh, and the idea, believe it or not, this layout actually gives us a little bit more room. So it's just uh, uh, making some more room for some more people. And, you know, one of the, the fun things that's happening at the moment is that the, this church is, is growing through people giving their lives to Jesus. And there are going to be some more this morning. You know, you may not know why you came this morning, but actually you came to meet the living God. And, and whether you meet him through healing, um, salvation, comfort, joy, uh, our, our prayer is you, you won't leave this place the same. But first, we're going to uh, talk. We've been um, going through some Bible characters. And uh, the thing I love about the Bible is it's real life. That, that's why we read it. You know, the Bible isn't a religious book. The Bible is a manual for life, Proverbs says. And it is so down to earth. So we're going to get down to earth today. I'm going to talk about how do you find the right husband or wife? We're talking about Isaac and Rebecca. You see, we talk about the promises of God, but how do we live in the promises of God? And you might already have found a wife or a husband, but what about your children? And what about their children's children? We want them to find good husbands and wives. Uh, so it goes, and there you go. So, and then once we find them, we want to keep them, right? We don't want to be like Abraham and give, their, give his wife away. So we don't do that. So God says to Abraham and Sarah, I'm going to make you a father and mother of the nations of promise. So Abraham realises that it's crucial that his son Isaac, who is the child of promise, and we are children of promise, just like Isaac. We read that last week, yep. We need to find the right husband or wife. Now, let me say something about biblical marriage. Biblical marriage is always between a man and a woman because it is primarily about promise, blessing and legacy. Marriage is not a mutual loving relationship. It is a covenant between a man, a woman and the Lord. That's marriage. When Juliet and I got married, somebody gave us a, a, a picture, a poster to go on our wall, it's still there. And it's from Ecclesiastes chapter four. It says, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Steve, Juliet, Jesus. That cord is not easily broken. Parents, your children need to find the right husband and wife. And we need to help them. Now, obviously, they don't always realise just how much help they need, um, which is why we start young. And we, we're praying for them that the Lord will bring the right husband and wife. And, and let me just give a, another note. The two main characters in the New Testament were single. Jesus and Paul. Jesus was single because he wasn't staying around. He was going back to, to heaven. And Paul spent a fair amount of time in prison, which does narrow your options a little bit. Paul believed it was better to be single for the mission of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, some are single for the sake of the Kingdom of God. It is a high, singleness is a high calling that should be honoured by all. However, if we all have that call, we cannot honour the first commandment, which says, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. That's Genesis chapter one. That is God's plan and call on our lives. So let's look at Isaac and Rebecca. If you've got a Bible, find Genesis chapter 24. We're gonna, um, it's quite a long chapter. I'm gonna read some bits, skip some bits. I think I said last week, my assumption is you'll go home and read the whole story and pray over it and, and think about it. So, Genesis 24. Abraham was now very old and the Lord had blessed him in every way. 
He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but you will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son, Isaac. Just put a finger there, we'll come back to it. Do not find a wife or a husband among the Canaanites. Why? We do not follow the practices of the world. Your husband or wife needs to come from the Lord's stock. Now, the reason the servant has to go and find a wife It's because there were not many around. Isaac is now probably 37, coming up to 40. So um, we're not just talking about getting married when you're young. I I think I was 31 when I got married. But there is always a shortage of good marriage stock. Have you noticed that? So you have to go and find them, which can be fun. And that's why you need to be in a church like this. So many of you owe me. (laughs) You found someone that you owe me. (laughs) They're sitting on the front row. Some of you parents, you owe me because your kids have found people that love Jesus. And I'm telling you, one day I'm gonna come and collect. The New Testament says, don't marry an unbeliever. Why? Practices. They will live differently from the way you want to live. The reason Jesus has bought, brings people together is to multiply the call on our lives. You see, the, the spouse you choose will either multiply or kill the call on your life. It's that important. Let's move on quickly. Otherwise, we'll never get anywhere. Verse five. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham, and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. We'll pause there. So you want to find a wife or a husband. Stay in the promise of God. Do not leave the course of the promise to find a wife. Seek first the kingdom and husband and wife will be added unto you. That's, that's what, don't go here, don't go the back. Stay where God is, is the stay on the route that God is putting you on to find a husband and wife. You're not waiting for the promise to happen. You, you are in the promise, live in it. And as you live in the blessing and the promise of God, He will add a husband or wife unto you. Number two, angels play a part in finding your future husband or wife. How cool is that? Have you ever wondered how God gets things done? Now, I know He uses us, but sometimes we're a little bit unreliable. He uses angels. Jesus talks about the angels who guard our children. There are angels all around you looking out for your husband or your wife and arranging circumstances so you will meet them. 
Therefore, expect a miraculous encounter. That's what angels do. It's one of their jobs. They've got, they've got a few other jobs. How cool is that? Have you ever thought about that? I thought it was really cool. There's three people. They go, really? Finding the right person to marry is the most important decision next to choosing Jesus you will ever make. Now, the problem is most people choose their marriage partner by their hormones. <laughs> you cannot trust your hormones. But you don't understand, I get really hot when I'm around them. We'll take a cold shower. It'll work. You, I'm not saying don't go after feelings of love, but please, please engage brain and wisdom and look for the Holy Spirit when you're making the most important decision of your life. Verse 10. When is it? Here it is. Then the servant left taking with him 10 of his master's camels loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram somewhere and made his way to the town of, of, of Nahor. He, he made the camels kneel down near the well outside the town as it was towards evening, the time when William, women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. So, principles for finding husband and wife. Take notes. I don't care where you do it. You can get your phone out. Take notes. Go where there is good stock. You want good marriage stock. And he, and, and he has made a long journey. And now what he does is he goes where the women are. If you want to get run over by a train, stand on the railway track. If you want to find a husband and wife, you have to go where there are guys and girls. You know, and you might hear, well, there's a church down the road and there's a load of good looking guys in there. We'll go take a look. You mean you're allowed to? I thought that was illegal. No, of course. Do you know, you know, um, I, I <laughs> we, we, there, was, there was a while where we had, um, you know, just lots of girls here. I knew the guys wouldn't be far behind. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Number two, pray, Lord, give me success. Pray that you would find a husband and wife. This is a really good prayer. And it's one that the Lord loves to answer. Now, the, the interesting thing is, what does the servant look for? When he's looking for a, a, a wife for Isaac, generosity. He says, Lord, what I'm looking for is someone that won't only give me a drink, but will give the camels a drink too. Now, you're going to have to contextualise that. <laughs> but what we're saying is you want, you want someone that will always go the extra mile. This is what the Bible says. You know, I don't think she had her good gear on. You know, I, 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 my hunch is she had a, I, I, got, I don't know why I got told off, she had her dungarees on. I don't think she had her makeup on. When you're, when you're watering and, you know, feeding camels, you don't really need makeup or dungarees. It's really interesting that wasn't what he was looking for. You're looking for someone with substance. I've said a number of times, you, you're not really interested in Ken or Barbie. That's not what you're looking for. Now, ladies, don't marry a sluggard. That's what the, the Bible says. And if you're a man, don't marry a cow of Bashan. All right? Now, some of you are, what's a cow of Bashan? Amos chapter 4. 
They were a bunch of women that were only interested in wealth and position. And Amos prophesies again, you don't want that. Ladies, you don't want someone lazy. Look, if a guy's a bit round, rough around the edges, you can clean him up. All right, do you know, we're 28 years in. You do know, don't, because I'm going to be in trouble if I get it wrong. And, and it's been quite a long journey for Juliet, just cleaning me up. <laughs> but what you do want is that he has a job preferably a house, but some money. I'm mean, just telling you, this is the Bible. And guys, when you get married, you're going to put the PlayStation away and you're going to raise sons and daughters and you're going to give them your attention. Guys, you want a good looking girl. Rebecca was very Beautiful. But you want a girl who is intelligent, who can speak, who has something about her. You know, Proverbs 31 says that, that there, one of the gifts of a wife is that her husband becomes honoured in all the city. that this, 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 this woman releases something in the husband where he becomes honoured. And that we're in, a, we're in a society, we don't like to talk about some of these things, but where there is honour in the city. Now, I'm not saying don't look for beauty. You know, and Rebecca, I've said, was very beautiful. You know, the next story, Jacob falls in love with Rachel and she is curvy and has bright eyes. Curves are good. Bright eyes are better. <laughs> you see, when Isaac sees Rebecca, he loves her, if we get there, verse 67. But this love is much more than hormones. It involves God joining us together for all of our earthly lives. You're going to spend the rest of your life with this person. Let me, let me just tell you something about marriage. Because often when we're, we're dating, there are little niggles. You know, there's there just a few things that really annoy you about him or her. Let me tell you something about marriage. When you're married, they get worse times 10. They do not get better. So any little niggle now times it by 10 if you marry him. I, I mean, I can't speak the other way around because I'm a guy, and, uh, but, and she's nodding. <laughs> Verse 15. Uh, where are we? Verse 15. Moving quickly on to the Bible. Bef <clears throat> oh yeah. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of, of, of Bethuel, son of um, Milcah, as I like to say, the milkman, who was the wife of Abraham, brother of Nahor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my Lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring, never go anywhere without a gold nose ring, um, and 10 shekels. Then he asked, whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room for you, for, room in your father's house for us to spend the night? 
She answered, I am the daughter of, of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, born to Nahor. And she added, we have plenty of straw and fodder as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed, bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on a journey to the house of my master's relatives. God brings people together. What is your miracle? Husbands, wives, what is your miracle? What was it that brought you together? You know, um, how will you know that God has brought you together? Jesus says this, therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. Jesus is clear. So how do I know that God brought Julia and I together? Well, we have a story. We, we, we have a miraculous story. You know, the first, the first was she, she became a Christian, not in this church, but in the church I was leading and planting before. You know, and I, I've said to a lot of guys, you know, look, if you want to find a wife, lead a church because you're in charge and you get first pick. <laughs> so, and it worked. Um, now, <laughs> there are better reasons to lead a church, okay, but I'm just kidding. But she, she became a Christian in our, in our church and I, I watched her change and transform. But the real reason that um, we're together is she had the confidence to ask me out. I know you're shocked. Whoa. I mean, I thought the feminists would be going, yes. <laughs> she asked me out. And, and I was a single guy leading a, a church. And, you know, I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't kind of, sorry, you're heckling. <laughs> I didn't, I, I, I was just careful. So I didn't meet with lots of girls on my own. And, um, and I was busy anyway. So I, 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 I kind of thought I'd get married sometime. And anyway, so Juliet told one of, one of the leaders around, she said, I, I think I really like Steve. And she assumed she was doing it in confidence. So they just came and told me, in confidence. <laughs> okay, so she makes a pastoral appointment to see me. And so we're chatting a bit. And then she says, I, I, um, I've got something to say. I went, oh, really? She doesn't know I know, I know. I'm just, I, it was kind of fun. Um, <laughs> And she said, I like you, but not just as my pastor. That's a great line. She got me on that. <laughs> and, and so, so we, were, we were dating for a while. I, I loved, I, Juliet is just a, 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 a servant and she's just so incredibly generous. And that's, that's what, I, that's what I, I fell in love. She's also gorgeous as well. But it, it was, that's, what I, that's what I fell in love with. So I asked her to, to marry me. And we, we met in the October. And it was so just a few months. And look, you're going to ask me one day, how do I know if he's the right person or she's the right person? And I'm going to give you this answer. You're just going to know. It's not helpful, is it? But you do, right? You just know. So I knew. So anyway, so I, I waited till midnight on New Year's Eve where I said, Juliet, will you marry me? And she didn't answer. And that one of the problems I, I have is that sometimes I think things and don't say them. And she just didn't answer. And, and she actually says the question wasn't clear enough. I thought I was crystal clear. And so she, she, she went home and I thought, well, this is really odd. Cause I, 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 and I thought I did ask her, but maybe I didn't. Anyway, she came around the next day, New Year's Day. Still, she didn't even mention it. I think, okay, this is strange. Um, and anyway, it starts to, it's about four o'clock, four or five o'clock, it starts to snow 
outside and it's snowing quite heavily. And she goes, oh, I think I better go home. And I, I said, would you like me to drive you home, being the gent? And her answer was, I've driven in snow before, you know. <laughs> okay. Three quarters of an hour later, phone goes, I've crashed my car. Can you come and rescue me? Night to the rescue. Um, <laughs> but, what, but what happens is, what I didn't know was she prayed, oh God, tell me if I'm meant to marry Steve and lead the church, because apparently the church was more of a problem than me, which Paul mentions in his letters, it's a whole other talk. Um, and, you know, am I called to lead the church? Because she was a relatively new Christian. Anyway, she crashes a car, but she cra it, she crashes near um, one of the ladies in the church. So she walks down the road, bangs on this lady's door and says, um, um, could I use your phone? This was before mobile phones. Can I use your phone to call Steve? And the lady went, call Steve. <laughs> I see. And she, and she said, yeah, yeah, you know, we've been dating. I just want, and she said, well, it's the strangest thing. She said, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're to marry Steve and, and help him lead the church. And she said, the funny thing is, I don't even like Steve. <laughs> and then she said, it must be for you. <laughs> so I, 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 you know, arrive, pick her up, take her back home. And she turns around to me and goes, yes. Yes to what? <laughs> yes to it snowing. You know, I've moved on. Um, I, haven't. <laughs> I haven't, I'm just kidding. And, and so we get married. But that, there's part of our story that God brings us together. She becomes a Christian in, in my church, that there is prophetic words. And there were lots of other prophetic words. But, but right the way the Lord's going, yes, 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 yes. You want that. Next thing, identity. Oh, really, next thing. I just want you to notice something in this story. The servant gives Rebecca the gifts before she reveals her identity. The nose ring and the bracelets. I Googled it. They're worth about, it'd be about £6,000. Ladies, Expect gifts. <laughs> if he doesn't cherish you before you're married, you're in trouble. And I want to add, check the ring is real. She was a virgin. Ladies, if a man will not marry you, do not sleep with him. God's plan is intimacy with one person. Now, I know in our society that is not the case. I also know that many have come to faith and that some of you may have a checkered sexual history. If you've come to Jesus Christ, you have died with him and you are raised a new creation. Jesus says, I have made all things new. Paul writes to the Colossians, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Whatever your background is, when you go in as a Christian to marriage, you go in clean, restored and transformed. And you don't go into marriage any other way. His mercy. Did you, we sang the song, His love. He'll break down any wall. He'll, he'll, he'll light up any, push any shadow away. There is nothing Jesus Christ cannot redeem. And when you get married 
and you walk down that aisle and you make those vows, man and woman, with Jesus Christ, you are clean. And you start a new life together and a new story. Really quick, hospitality, not isolation. Rebecca's background is one of plenty, not lack. And her immediate response is, there is room for you. Come and stay. Don't marry someone who pulls you out of community, who doesn't like people, who loves their own company. When people come to Jesus, he brings us into community. And when people pull us out of community, it is a sign of unhealth. Don't marry a victim. Isaac was blessed, therefore more than a conqueror. Don't rescue someone through marriage. Someone needs rescuing, send them to Freedom Centre. Don't marry them. Okay, I mean it. And if there's even a hint of violence, run. There was no coercion in this story from the servant, from Isaac, from the family. Rebecca made the choice. Let me just really quick say something about divorce. Malachi says that God hates divorce. My personal belief is that any marriage can be saved no matter how dire. Those who are forgiven much love much. I know I'm taking that verse out of context, but it's true. I've seen it. Providing both people can die to themselves and come before the Lord, a miracle can happen. Divorce is the single most destructive thing that happens to a family. It destroys legacy and prosperity. Keep telling your story, your miracle of how you came together, of how God brought you together. Tell it to your children. Tell it to their children. Rehearse your story to each other with thankfulness. You know, a declaration, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Jesus isn't saying it would be a good idea not to separate. He says, what God has joined together, let no one separate. What about widows? Paul says it's really good to remarry. And uh, my, I just uh, comment, the Lord sees your loss and so um, you should expect to marry up. The Lord sees your pain and, um, and what you've gone for and the scriptures are clear. I think you see it in the story of Ruth. Marry up. He wants to bless you and he wants to bless your children and your children's children. There is always blessing with the Lord. To, to finish really quick. They said, uh, this is verse seven, I'm just gonna read it. Let's call the young woman and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, this is the blessing, I love this. Our sister, maybe you increase the thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. And then Rebecca and attendants got ready and mounted the camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac had come from somewhere nearby for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate. As he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. It'd be really easy just to miss this. This is a sunset. The Lord said a sunset. As, as Rebecca comes to Isaac. God is a big romantic. God loves to do this stuff. He set them a sunset. And with all the practical stuff, in the miraculous, there is so much wonder and so many things the Lord wants to do as part of our story. She got down from her camel and asked, <laughs> asked the servant, who is that man in the field coming to greet us? He's my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he'd done. Isaac brought her into his, the tent of his mother, Sarah. He married Rebekah. So she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. God 
loves romance. Don't, hear, don't let anyone tell you any difference. He finds the person and he sets the scene. The blessing on Rebecca is to have children that possess cities. The promise for Isaac is your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. It's multiplied. Children who take their inheritance, who grasp the promises <clears throat> of God. You know, next week we'll see what happens when Jacob and Esau um, give away, you know, Esau gives away his birthright. But we have a birthright of the promises of God. He, he wants to bless us. You know, it's interesting that all the patriarchs had trouble conceiving, but all conceived. There is a battle over your children of promise, but there is a blessing for your offspring. And that's why we always pray for people to have babies. When they're struggling to conceive, we always pray. There is often a battle over children of promise, but we pray. Isaac and Rebecca each found love and security in the other. And they shared a deep understanding that the Lord, the God of Abraham, had brought them together. Don't forget your story. Miracles and prophecy bring us together. Don't settle for anything less. If you've found the right person, marry them. If they're not the right person, go and look for someone else. Don't get... Don't just hang, hang on. If you're not acting properly towards someone, Paul says, get married, 1 Corinthians 7. But please hear me. Marriage is not just a mutual, loving relationship. It is where God brings two people together. A divine mystery, Paul says. They become one in covenant and with each other and God. Therefore, let no one separate. And together, we see God's purposes and promises worked out into our story that we pass on to our children and to our children's children. I'm done. Why don't you stand up? You might be here, to, here this morning and I, I mentioned when I started, you know, God, the reason you're here might not be why you think you're here. You might think you're here to find out about God. Actually, you're here because God wants to meet with you. So you'd know God. And if you've never given your life to Jesus, I'm, in a moment I'm going to give you an opportunity to come forward and give your life to Jesus. It is the most important decision you'll make it is way more important than the wife you choose or the husband you choose because without Jesus, none of this works. He, he is the thing that holds us together. He is the person that opens up the promises of God. And the reason he came was so that we could know God. And if you don't know God, if you don't have a relationship with him, It's easy to remedy. You give, your, you give your life to him. You put your trust in him. So if you've never given your life to Jesus, or maybe you did a long, long while ago, and you've been away and you know it's time to come home, I'm going to invite you to come forward now. And we're going to pray. And we're just going to introduce you to Jesus. And people every week are finding Jesus and their lives are changing. So if that's you this morning, come on down now. Now, I know you're looking around to see if anyone else is going to come, but trust me, this is the most important decision of your life. Is there anyone more? You know you need to give your life to Jesus or you need to come home. Where are you? Come on down. Come on. Hello. Hey. Just hang on a moment. Is there, is there more? This is a recommitment.
There's some more. I'm just, I'm just hanging on a bit. You know you need to give your life to Jesus. Okay. Stretch out your hands. We're going to pray. In fact, we're all going to pray. Say this after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I give you my life. I'm coming home. I want you to wash me clean. I want you to fill me with your love. I want to know your goodness again. I put my trust in you, Jesus. You are Lord of my life. Reign in my life, Jesus. just pray it would just be like the rain falling from heaven making everything new you are so good Jesus you are so good and we love you we thank you for your presence Lord fellow up fellow up They're going to keep praying. I want to pray for a number of people. <clears throat> We're going to have a little bit of fun, all right? Because church is fun, remember? I'm going to pray the Lord would release romance. So if you're on the market, this is blowing your cover. You know, look, you, you gotta, you got to say, you know, I'm on the market. I want to I wanna find someone. We're going to pray for you. Come on down. People are like, oh my goodness, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> you might be... Um, <clears throat> You may be divorced or widowed or anything. You're just, you, you're looking for a partner. It's okay to come down. God loves us. He's for us. Come on, there could be some more. And, you know, I know often we, t- we pray with our eyes closed. Keep your eyes open and have a look round. Hold your hands out. Hold your hands. Lord, bless them. Bless them, Lord. Lord, you're for us. You have plans for our life before the creation of the earth. Lord, the angels are getting excited. They've got something to do this week. Lord, I pray, release the angels, the the ministering spirits that minister to those who are being rescued. Those who are being saved, release them, Lord. The, 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 the husband or the wife that you have for me, Lord, make sure our paths cross. But let the angels direct the train, break the bus down, crash the car. We don't care as long as we're not hurt, Lord, but make the paths cross, Lord. And Lord, I pray for divine encounters. Lord, that Your goodness would break out in our lives, that we would start to understand, Lord, that You want to bless. You're for us. This isn't hard for You, Jesus. So I pray, I pray blessing on them. And Lord, I pray for good stock. Lord, I I pray for men and women who love You. I pray for men and women who have calls on their life. I pray for men and women who are honest, who are generous, who have jobs, 
who have resource and money, Lord, I, I, because we, we want Your blessing to be released. So Lord, I, I pray, I pray that You would release it this morning. Release it in this place. Release it in this place, Lord. Come Holy Spirit. Light up our eyes, Lord, bright eyes. Bright eyes, Lord. The light of Jesus. More, Lord, let Your Spirit come. Let Your Spirit come, Lord. The most, the most attractive thing about You is the Holy Spirit in You. He, he is the one that people fall for. So Lord, I pray, fill them up, fill them up. Now there's a few other, there's some other people I wanna pray for and I realise we're running over time, but hey, we do every week. Um, if, if you're having trouble conceiving, okay, we wanna pray for you. So um, come on down, just start to come down and we wanna, we wanna pray for you. And, and also some of you, some of you people, um, just go to my right, your left. And, and um, some, of, some of you married people, your story is so special, okay? And, and you've stopped telling it, okay? I want you to, um, I want to pray for you, that you would start to tell your story of how you met and what God has done for you and how He's led you. And so that this lot are encouraged and it's like your testimony is released into their life. So you come down as well. You love the story. You love how you met. There's a miracle. Come on down. Come on. Come on. You may not have told it for a long while, but get down here. Because it, it's the miracle that God has done in your life. So Lord, I just pray as people come down, bless them. And that the story and the miracle of how they met their wife or their husband and what you did in their life, Lord, we, we bless it. We bless it. And Lord, I pray they'd be contagious. And Lord, when, when, the, when these youngsters come and ask them, how do you know? How do you know they're the right people? And they answer, we, you'll just know, but they'll also tell their story of how they know. So Lord, I, I pray, release this, release this. We're gonna, um, I, 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 can we, can we do um, that song, um, the, the love of God, break down every wall. Can we go out to that one? The one we did earlier. That's the one, that's the one. Now, look, some of you, some of you have a history. Okay, some of you have a history and we're gonna sing this song again. That this, this love of God breaks down every wall and literally you are gonna feel the, 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 the washing of Jesus come over you. Okay, as we sing, let's go.
yourselves on it's going to be an incredible incredible time in the Lord's presence guys we love you if you're a student we've got student lunch after so feel free to head there but we love you have an incredible and blessed week